Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Happy Thursday and end of the week to you. This is going to be a Raid Shadow Legends video going over some exciting stuff. We are actually finding out a little bit sooner than I thought we would about what the next fusion slash fragment champion is going to be. We're already getting the teasers this morning, so I will give you the live reaction to that. I'll let you know what I think of the kit and how I think this champion will grade out and how sought after I think it will be and all of that because that's going to be the main discussion in the news today. But then we'll also go over everything happening in raid here to get you caught up as we head into the end of the week. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, Plarium announcing this champion is going to be starting exactly one week from right now. We are going to be getting a Fragment event starting next Thursday, which will be May 11th. Now, it's going to be a Fragment event, so a little bit different. If you're new to Raid, the Rosalvarg event that just happened, that was a Fusion event where you do the Rares into the Epics into the Legendary. This will be different. This will be you earn Fragments instead of copies of a Rare Champion, and if you collect 100 Fragments, they'll release a calendar where where it has like 145 to 160 fragments in total. You'll get bonus ones for winning tournaments and all that, and you need to get at least 100 to be able to fuse the champion. Well, I'm doing it even. You need to get 100 to be able to summon the champion from fragments, and if you get at least close, like 80, 85, 90, they will usually put some in the shop as an offer for you at $2 a piece. So let's say you get 90 fragments, you will see a shop offer of 10 fragments for like $20 or so. So that's kind of like the quick rundown of a fragment event champion and this one will be starting on next thursday and unfortunately right out the gate i can see on the top right that this champion is an attack champion so whenever plarium releases attack champions i can't really grade them for you effectively because this champion could have awesome multipliers thus be an awesome champion the champion could have trash multipliers thus be a trash champion whenever they are a damage dealer like 75% of their grade comes down to their multipliers unless they have a ton of utility outside of the damage they deal, which usually for attack champions, they have to get kills to snowball or they have to get kills to get value or they need to inflict a ton of damage to bring value on the team. So without knowing the multipliers, I've been trying for years, Plarium will not give us the multipliers on these little graphic teasers. So we're just gonna have to wait until we can test it on the test server or data mine it. But the, all that aside, let's go ahead and analyze the kit and see if we have potential if the multipliers are decent. We've got an A1 that's a multi-hitter, which is nice. And then the first hit is going to have a 30% place stun. The second hit is going to have a 30% to place defense break. Uh, that'll be really good for like boss fights and stuff. You get the, the, the defense break on the A1. And then also during the waves and stuff, you'll have a stun on an A1. Having some CC there is always nice. And it does book up to a 50%. And it is a multi-hitter. So that'll be a fairly consistent stun on the a1 which is pretty good and then the a2 is going to be an aoe that can book to a three turn cooldown and it will ignore 20 percent of each target's defense that's very good we are seeing the meta shift to some of these champions that have abilities that just have a baked in ability to ignore defense so it is very good i like that that means if her multipliers are good she does have potential to slot into that top 15 dps viable role because also she has spirit affinity and it's a little bit hard to find some really solid spirit affinity nukers uh but we're also going to be getting a fully 100 percent chance to break defense again here that's interesting uh why is it on the a1 and the a2 interesting uh they should have went with like a weaken on the a1 or something maybe or or like leech or something but anyway uh break defense and then the debuff cannot be resisted if all score crimson helm is on the same team so it looked like gonna be a tandem Plarium is loving the tandems recently. They're really trying to release champions. You see how they added like Yumiko to the game and they have Karato. Uh, they add the Marichka, Taras combo. They're really trying to make all these new champions in the game. A lot of times have a tandem baked in. I'm not able to see all score uh, in game here in the, in the index and there's no test server for me to check or anything. So I don't know if all score is going to be good and make this an insane duo like Marichka and Taras or not, but she is going to be having a bonus there of it can't be resisted if you are doing the full combo. So, I mean, that A2 is all right. Um, and like if you're going to be trying to stack a bunch of damage and crit rate and crit damage, you're not going to be wanting to build high accuracy. So like it, it, it it should almost just be cannot be resisted. I mean, but I don't know the multipliers again, so it's it's tough. But then we've got attack all enemies two times. 
Now, this one only books to a four turn cooldown, so it's going to need to be pretty good. Before attacking, place increased crit rate and increased crit damage on this champion for two turns, so that's why. Because there's kind of like a self buff baked in, it makes it uh, a four turn cooldown because they don't want it to be too broken of having like the constant rotation of the self buff. And then it's also going to grant an extra turn if it gets a kill. So, because of those two things, that's why it's not a three turn cooldown. But, um,. Uh, like the the meta in live arena is really shifting to champions that are able to self buff you got champions like Turvald and Errol that are really sliding up the board because they are self-sufficient and can place their own buffs and stuff so getting the 30 percent crit rate and crit damage is very nice Kandrafon has a self buff but it doesn't grant an extra turn this one does do it before attacking and all of that so really really good that she does have the self-sustain because that fits in with kind of how the game is shaping out and what is viable at the moment and then we've got a passive inflicts 20% more damage to targets under shield and then also will ignore shield if you are taking advantage of the combo with all score. So three different things that help you if all score is on the team. So uh, all score is probably going to be like a void legendary or something they come out with. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll because they did the same thing with like Karato. They released Karato like this. And then we find out like Yumiko, the one that pairs with him is a void legendary. I bet you Allsgore will be a void legendary. Maybe they've already posted it somewhere. I wasn't able to see uh, before recording this, but I bet you Allsgore will be some sort of new void legendary. So yeah, it's really, really tough to grade the champion. I would say the kit has potential. If the multipliers are at least solid, I like it. She doesn't need to have the best multipliers in the game to be viable, but if she has above average, decent multipliers and can crank out a decent amount of damage, I can see her being a, a pretty solid champion. But again, the spectrum is going to be so wide because she could either be S tier or like B tier, depending on how the multipliers shake out. But I, I would say it's at least promising and, and there's at least some potential here before hopefully by next Thursday, we'll have a good picture of what the multipliers are going to be. And we will know exactly kind of a, a more accurate way to predict the value here. So then as far as the Fusion and Fragment Champion Tier list, we're going to have to update that, obviously. And geez, this, this new camera is just too HD. I mean, you can see, like, the blemishes of my face. See that right here? Like, this is, like, 2 HD. I'm going to have to go back to my uh, my my USB webcam here. But no. Anyway, uh, we've got the, uh, the, the Tier list here. I expect her to probably grade out. I mean, like, I feel like Supreme Elaine is going to be just as good as the champion. So I, I would say grades out somewhere, I mean, somewhere between, like, here and uh, here. Like, yeah, like, literally somewhere here to here is probably where this champion is going to fall in. So I don't think top tier, unless the multipliers are just godly then maybe top tier but uh based off of like the prediction i'm gonna say probably somewhere in the second half of this second tier then for the other stuff happening in game we do have the summoning boost happening this weekend i talked about this more extensively in yesterday's video where we're gonna have the 2x void shards with a 10x for laorius so keep out for that this weekend just be careful because we're probably going to be getting a guaranteed void event pretty soon here somewhere approaching the middle of may and if you made me guess during the fragments for this new champion we're going to be getting a champion chase and a summon rush event I bet you during one of those, Champion Chase or Summon Rush, we get a guaranteed void event for 110 voids for a void champion. So just keep that in mind. I'm like 75% sure that's going to happen here at some point during the Fragment event. But you know what? Honestly, they might do it early in the week. They might have a guaranteed event on like Tuesday with, uh, well, no. For CBC, they'll do two different 10Xs. So they won't do like a guaranteed event during CBC. We have CBC here in a few days. But they might do it the next week on like Tuesday when there's no CVC. They might do a guaranteed event for 110 voids and then make sure it doesn't coincide for the weekend when you have to do the Summon Rush or Champion Chase. That way you have to kind of pull shards constantly. So I don't know. I hope that doesn't happen, but I, I could see that happening. So just beware if you're pulling shards this weekend here and keep that stuff in mind. 
which as you can see, there's going to be a champion chase countdown right here. Now that's going to be coinciding with the 2X, 10X void event happening this weekend. And this is essentially a countdown to when the 2X voids and all of that will start. Now we've also got a couple tournaments live right now. There is an immortal soul stone up for grabs in the fire night. So if you're looking for something to spend your energy on this weekend, it's never bad long term to scoop up as many immortal and eternal soul stones as you can because you need to you know develop the blessings on your champions over the long haul for your account. And because this this is here. I expect the participation rate to be about double of the normal for tournaments. The normal is about 10%. I expect this Fire Night tournament to be about 20%. And down here, you can see the Immortal Soul Stone right here. That's worth like two legendary books or so. So it's like the top reward at 3K being two legendary books, which I think if it was, people would be pretty excited about that. So I do think it's a good top reward. At least they didn't go with the Glyph as the top reward. We saw them do the top reward for like the Ice Golem Tournament or something this week. We saw them do the top reward being a Glyph, and that's kind of a meme. This structure is much better. They did switch it to an attack percent Glyph, so, uh, but they also don't have like an Ancient Shard in here or anything but all in all i'll probably try to get the 3,000 points this weekend because it's nice to get that little bump of a bonus and the fire knight one of those better end game dungeons to grind anyway and then there's also a tag arena tournament going on where you do have a barrel up here as the top reward which is decent but it's tag arena so it's pretty tough to get the 3,000 points but if you're able to uh go for it there is at least a noteworthy barrel up for grabs there as the top reward and then in the uh in the events we do have a couple decent ones going on we've got champion training with a lot of these soul coins i'm gonna have to focus on at least trying this a little bit over the weekend and then we also have the i really recommend doing this the artifact enhancement event is giving you a lot of oil and core hammers and ore so i think if you've got the silver i think this is a pretty good artifact enhancement event in my opinion so definitely keep an eye on some of these events happening here in game and then as far as the offers in the shop special progress these aren't noteworthy these are average at best uh the barrel bundle king's feast um I don't know why, but the food, like the way they do these like slabs of meat, it always looks weird to me. Like it doesn't fit the raid aesthetic for some reason. Maybe I'm crazy. I feel like the the, the chicken and like the slabs of meat, they just don't fit the aesthetic. Like the, the barrel kind of does. The barrel looks pretty good. It just, it looks off to me for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. It doesn't look like raid. It looks like it would be in a, like, in like a different game. But um, anyway, let's go monthly mini. We know the drill. Soulstone power pack. Okay, savage and great. So, okay. Uh, all of these deals are either average or below average. There isn't anything super noteworthy to keep you in the loop on here for the shop, unfortunately. So alrighty, I will make sure that we get an article breaking down like we did with Rosalvarg, and I'll get a poll going here on the channel and update you with how people are feeling in the community about the new Fusion Champion and get you all of the information and breakdowns that you're going to need as we head in to next Thursday. I'll get to work on that, and I appreciate all of you. Hope you have a fantastic end of your week, and I will see you soon in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Peace.